Hi everyone, my name is Madhu. Um, in today's video, we're going to be talking about four important neuroscience developments in 2021. So the first development we're going to be talking about is actually what won the Nobel Prize in Medicine this year. So David Julius and Arden Padapushan won the 2021 Nobel Prize in Medicine for their discoveries of receptors for temperature and touch. Their work actually focused on how our bodies can sense heat, um, cold, and other irritants. This is actually very important because it has led to new insights for us about what the true nature of pain is and how exactly we target pain therapy. And to understand how the signal is responsible for pain sensation and also temperature transmitted by neural circuits to the brain, researchers actually took advantage of a lot of substances produced by animals and plants, including toxins from tarantulas and snakes, and the molecule that produces the heat and chili peppers, um, also the chemicals that um, make horseradish and wasabi so pungent. So um, guided by all of these studies of how these compounds trigger these sensations of heat and cold and also pain, um, what Julius did was he honed on a class of proteins called TRP, pronounced TRIP actually, ion channels as key players in uh, the nervous system's pain signaling apparatus. So this work is actually very, very important because um, the pharmaceutical industry can use this work to develop potential targets for new painkillers. And these discoveries are also very important because there is a very large need for new drugs that could treat pain without the side effects and addictive potential of opioids. So the next major discovery I am going to be talking about is also one of my favorite discoveries this year. I think it's really, really cool. Um, scientists at ETH Zurich have actually shown the connecting processes or prosthetic limbs to the nervous system can help amputees perceive this prosthetic limb as weighing less and actually feeling like a very natural part of their body. And this is really important because the leg amputees can often perceive their prosthetic limbs to feel really heavy, like it weighs them down. But the researchers have found that when they enable these sensory signals to be transmitted from the prosthetic limbs to um, the amputee's nervous system, this helps them perceive this prosthetic limb as a lot lighter than it actually is. And um, these prosthetes actu actually work by providing feedback to the nervous system um, they use electrodes that are implanted in the thigh, and these in turn actually connect to nerves in the leg. And there are also sensors under the sole of the prosthetic foot, um, tactile sensors to be specific, and also other sensors in the prosthetic knee joint would send information, which is then converted into pulses of currents and then transmitted to the nerves in the leg. So in a further study, neurofeedback was also actually found to reduce the perceived weight of a prosthet these by about 23%, as well as enabling faster and safer walking. So with a direct interaction between the biological world and the artificial one, scientists at ETH Zurich actually believe that electromechanical prosthetic limbs um, that can actually be controlled by thoughts are now very close. And I think that's really cool. So let's move on to the next slide. Um, okay, so for this slide, we're gonna be talking about why super agers retain uh, cognitive skills past their peers. So to explain to you what super agers exactly are, these are individuals who have cognitive skills that are way past peers in their old age. Um, so these super agers retain their youthful mental abilities well into their 70s and 80s they think like they are much younger, basically. And until now, the secret to understanding why they're retaining this peak shape has not been understood very well. But University Hospital Cologne and the Research Center Hulick have actually discovered a key difference in the biology of these superagers. So PET scans have actually shown that superagers have more resistance to tau and amyloid proteins. 
Um, and until these years, these proteins have um, actually proven very difficult to study, but we have now found that super agers will have low levels of these tau and amyloid pathology, and this in turn leads to various kinds of neurodegeneration in most people in their later years, but not for super agers. Um, and it has been identified now that since they have this reduced resistance to tau and amyloid accumulation, this is the primary biological factor for the loss of um, peak cognitive shape. Sorry, it's the loss for a uh, peak cognitive shape in people who are not super agers. Okay, so in this slide, we're gonna be talking about optogenetics, which is also really cool. And in optogenetics, we have the ability to control nerve cells with light. So this is really important because it can offer insights into memory, perception, and also addiction. And um, here, nerve cells essentially become like light control puppets in a way. And a flash of light could actually induce a quiet neuron to fire signals, or it could also force an active neuron to be silent. So because of this, we could basically activate or silence the neurons that we want to control. And um, the molecule is actually the light sensor that we need. And in less than two decades, optogenetics has led to big insights into how memories are stored. And this creates perceptions and what goes wrong in the brain during depression and addiction. And scientists have actually used optogenetics to make mice fight, to make them mate, to make them eat, and even to give blind mice sight. And in a big first, optogenetics actually recently restored aspects of a blind man's vision. So these are unprecedented changes that we're seeing in the field of neuroscience. And in the past year, the actually in December, um, the second optogenetic technologies conference actually happened, which aims to open to an international audience to talk about the recent advances of optogenetics and explore its applications in biochemical, neurobiological, and biomedical research. So thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, please be sure to check out the other videos on our channel.